In my life, I have met only one other camera that I like shooting more than my LX. So the other day I asked myself, how many different camera models have I used? I roughed it out to be somewhere around 400. So second out of 400 isn't a shabby placement. The LX is as refined as a Federal Reserve gold bar, reliable as the only friend you'll let see you cry, and as at home in your hands as the skin on your palms. The LX, rightly, holds a perennial place as the most desired 35mm Pentax. The LX introduced or refined many of the staple Pentax features still in place today. Weather sealing, excellent metering, mechanical shutter speeds faster than the flash sync. Well, that one's not still around. And large, bright viewfinders. Using the LX, if you've never shot one before, is a magnificent experience. Put it up to your eye, and the viewfinder fills with almost the entire scene that will end up on the film. Set the camera to aperture priority mode and feel certain that your images will be properly exposed if the exposure is within the capabilities of the camera. So why? What magical formula did Pentax stumble upon when they made the LX? Simply, it was simplicity. Pentax released a fun-to-use professional-grade camera that delivers excellent images built with a good and easy user interface based on the best practices of camera design from the 60s through the 80s and paired it with a superb meter. In short, the LX provides a good user experience through a good user interface supported by good hardware. That combination whether you make cameras, cars, software, or sandwiches, is a simple three-part recipe for a good product. But the LX is not without its flaws, detractors, or Achilles heels. The LX suffers from electronics that have not uniformly withstood age and use, difficult replacement parts sourcing, and faulty rubber pads. If your light meter stays on, for more than 30 seconds after you press the shutter button, that's a common sign that the electronics are starting to fail. This failure can also manifest as the mirror staying up after the exposure, but that can also just be a sign of weak batteries. The meter LEDs staying on are a sure sign of a failing board, however. The LX, while it looked identical on the outside for the entire 21 year production run, had internal changes in those 21 years, the LX had three different circuit boards, three shutter winding and curtain systems, and two top covers. Repairing LX bodies was hard, even when parts were available, because parts were not interchangeable between variants. If you have an LX that needs a repair, expect the parts sourcing to take time and send your LX in well before you need it back. Sticky pads. Don't get me started. The pads were just an imperfect material selection that should not have happened. And also, if you pick an LX as your camera, you're in for an expensive ride. More than Nikons and Canons of the same vintage, parts for the LX are expensive and hard to obtain. Finding unmarred LX grid and plain matte focusing screens, for instance, required help from a specialist in parts sourcing. But you know what? When I shoot my LX, I don't think about how hard or spendy it was to find my ideal focusing screen. When I look at the photos, I don't concern myself with what I paid for the overhaul, including a new electronics board. When I hold the camera up to my eye and frame up my subject, I don't consider the cost of the viewfinder. The LX, yes, costs money, and it is one of those rare cameras where whatever you pay, it's going to be worth it. The LX has a lot of good qualities, too. It was the smallest and lightest 35mm professional system with a full suite of professional grade accessories. It lacks nothing that a professional film photographer would want. The LX was as robust as any 35mm camera and could be carried in either landscape or portrait orientation on the straps. And it's supported by one of the best 35mm lens systems out there, meaning that images are going to be sharp, contrasty, and generally attractive. The LX's end was, in a lot of ways, the end of the Pentax film camera era.
Pentax film cameras traipsed on for a few more years, and the last Pentax bodies were good, the MZS and 645N2 being contemporary masterpieces. But something was lost when the LX production line stopped for the last time. And while we may never have another made-new film camera with the LX's muscle, at least we got it in the first place. And the 21-year production run means that there are a lot of them out there, and a lot of them will work for a long time. At the end of July 2012, I uploaded my first film camera video manual. It was for the K1000. A week later, I received my first request for a video series, and that request was for the Pentax LX. Pentax LX video requests have come in on a semi-regular basis since then. So, almost four years later, here we are. For me, this was worth the wait. I hope it was for you too.